Well, it, it all to that. Uh, when I said Nate Johnston and and uh, Joe Thomas uh, was the foundation of the group called Electronic Bullet Locker. They started that name. Uh, and joining me in, I was it was only three of us then. It was Nate, Joe, and me. So at that time, I was developing. Like I say, from that noise I was making, the jerk sound, all that stuff I was doing, I was coming up with some tremendous little moves. So once I got involved with, with Nate and Joe, uh, we went on to find other dancers uh, because then we wanted to put, again, together a group. So I went on, I found cats like William Green, uh, Albert Prater, uh, Ricky McDowell, uh, we teamed up, uh, I taught him the style, uh, the popping style, because I told him that how I got the name Boogaloo, and it was just from feeling and from old dancing that we connected together. So as I started my movement in this production, uh, these guys joined me, and as they joined me, we teamed up to invent other dances. So, Tick and Will is like a generation of ticking. And how it came about him, it's like, you know, we did all kind of crazy things from watching cartoons, uh, watching people uh, as far as handicap. We would always look at different things to try to incorporate different kind of movements and stuff. So, Will will come up with the style called ticket, and that was because of the second hand of the clock. You know, like I said, we will always watch different things. We'll, we'll get an idea, and we'll pass it around. Uh, so then, uh, Ricky McDowell, his name is Twister Flex Don. He's responsible for all the Twister Flex, Neko Flex, uh, Master Flex. Will is it's ticking wheel, he's responsible for ticking, he's responsible for the moonwalk, and he's responsible for the backslide. These are dances that we made up while in big gyms, um, school cafeterias, all uh, this. These are dances that we incorporated and we gave them names. We actually named things of different style because of what each individual did. So that's why it was a boogaloo sound for doing all the movements in the Boogaloo camp. And then there was Ticking Wheel, that was our ticker. Then there was Twistle Flex Don, which was the man to do all the Twistle Flex. And then Toy Man Skeet, that's Albert Prater for the Toy Man style. So after that, uh, Nate and Joe uh, actually couldn't do the movement uh, of the dancing that we created. So they was more stiff. So it was more like robots and everything. So we went on to become a group within a group, uh, Electronic Boogaloo Locker and Electronic Robot. Slam and Slide, that's their name, that's their robot name. Uh, and then from there, uh, I went on, my dad, my mom, me and Pete has different mothers. We got the same father but different mothers. Uh, at that time, I'm about 17. We danced with these guys, Ticket Wheel, Twist Don, Toy Man, Ski. And then we had another brother from the neighborhood. He was good and locked. He always used to watch Don. You know, he didn't really, like, say, uh, was instructed through Don, but you know how you pick up stuff on TV and this and that. So. That's how electronic boogaloo lockers came behind. Because we had one dude that can lock. So after that, uh, years went by. Uh, my dad moved to Long Beach. Uh, the guys, was, I'm, I'm the oldest electronic boogaloo locker other than Nate, Nate Johnson. Uh, me and him, the same age, 54 right now at this time. Uh, I went on. Call Pete one day, we was talking on the phone, and I was telling him about the stance I got. And I'm explaining on the phone how to do it. Then you could 
hear Pete on the phone. You can hear him making this noise. You know, you can actually you know, hear like he back there really trying to do the stuff. So uh, I called my dad and I tell him I want to come down there. But before I told my group, they didn't want to travel because everybody was like, mama's kid. Mama kids means you don't want to leave your mom. You, you know, you're young and you're still holding on to mom. So I left and moved down to Long Beach with my dad and my stepmom and Pete now. So then this where Pete got involved. He wanted to learn. He wanted to learn this dance. So I started teaching Pete how to pop, the essence of pop and the theory and the basic level. And he got along with it. He does it just fine, this and that. So I gave him the name Poppin' Pete, of Poppin'. Then from there, uh, we went on to different local places, uh, dancing and all that. Then our name got around. Oh man, you see them two guys. Uh, do they Boogaloo Sam and do they Poppy Pete? So we went on. Then pretty soon we got famous because we would go to a house party. We called at the house parties. It would be locked because L.A. known for locked through Don. That's where it developed. That's where it comes from. Uh, so we would go. And we'll be doing our stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, the kids are looking at us straight because they never seen this dance. So all of, uh, all of a sudden, we started getting popularity around there in the communities and everything. And so we go to all the local centers and stuff and dance, dance, dance. So one guy, Robot Dane, which his name is Dane Parker, uh, we met him as a friend of moving to Long Beach. We started meeting different type of people. Well, not different type of people, but, you know, people in general. Uh, and they wanted to learn this dance, you know. So they come over to the house, introduce himself and all that. We become friends and this and that. So me and they started going against each other. He's locking and I'm bugging Lord and popping. So after that, I'm tearing, I'm blowing everybody away because it's a new style in Southern California. I mean, they ain't never seen it before. So they want to learn this dance. So we would try to practice with him and try to get him to do these styles and routines. Me and Pete, he couldn't get it. He was stiff, like. So me, knowing robot, which is not my dance, it's just a, something that I learned over the years of coming up, uh, I couldn't really tell you who really invented it though, but uh, I went on and I trained Dane Robot Style. I gave him the name, Robot Dane. Then after that, uh, one of my cousins from Arkansas came down to live with us and he's very tall, about 6'5". Uh, his name is Cedric Williams. Uh, he got involved, we started teaching him. So this is the time we're making this movement, but it's still electronic boogaloo lock, it hadn't changed yet. So we teaching, uh, by that time, you know, I'm teaching the backslide, the moonwalk to all of them. So Creepin' Sid, which is the name that we gave him, uh, started learning the techniques of backsliding, all the front slides, side slides, creeping, all of that. So he became good at that. So there we get it, right? Creep and see it is your name. So then on and on, finding more friends that we as we live in just about like, oh I guess maybe the second year going on the second year of living in Long Beach, uh, we run into these guys. Then we ran into a guy named uh, uh Gary Allen. Uh another locker. All these guys were lockers. We turned them into poppers. This and that. So we met this guy uh, after he had heard everything, the scene that, oh, this popping thing is going around. Oh man, you got to see this dance. This dance is wild. So we meet him. Gary's locking and everything, you know. So he see us, you know, we doing our little routines then because Dane Parker and Gary Allen are the best friend because they're from the same high school, Poly High in Long Beach, California, and uh, started training. And then uh, Gary Allen had a, a, a kind of style where he, his arms and everything go out. And he'll break his legs down all kinds. If, if, 
And it's a guy now today named Jazzy J that does the same style, Scarecrow. I mean, uh, Scare yeah, Scarecrow. Uh, so, you know, like I say, me, the person that I always look into different kind of ways of doing things, yeah, you look like a Scarecrow, you know what I'm saying? So, this name became Scarecrow Scally. <coughs> so then after that, you meet more people who get still electronic boogaloo lockers, still them. Uh, we meet another guy, his name is Marvin Boozer. Uh, little old short dude, flimsy hands, look funny, look, look, look like a puppet to me. You know, so God showed him how to puppet little moves and all that because he wanted to learn. He wanted to be. And at that time, we were still establishing a group because I left my old group and I promised them if I ever get to start them, I would bring them from Fresno to have a shot at what I had. So we meet uh, Marvin Boozer. He comes over. He also was a locker. He liked the style. Every wow. So. We work with him. He got puppet style, so Puppet Boozer. I gave him that name. Then, at that time, we start putting together in Fresno, which is the first very routine that we learned and put together in my city, Fresno, in 1976. I went on and I taught them the same uh, routine. So, we was dancing, we connected. Now we like trying to boogaloo with five from Long Beach. Me being the original from Fresno, I don't got my brother, I don't got all these guys. Yeah. So after that, you know, we in LA, you know, that's a good place, that's where Hollywood at. You know, you want to be famous. So we'll get on the bus with our ghetto blaster, go to Sunset Boulevard. Put the ghetto blast out there and just dance, dance, dance. Now remind me, cars are passing everywhere and they're looking at us, but they're stopping in the road because this dance to them is, is weird. You know, like I say, when we got to Long Beach, we was the only guy doing this weird kind of style. So cars will stop. We have to we have the bus stop just doing our thing and all that. So the police come, you know. And he said, uh, you guys can't be going this, y'all stopping traffic. So we move on down. At this time, we trying to wait on the bus. We was like disappointed because we didn't really make any money because we usually just put a hat on the ground and people put money in and everything. So this girl, we happen to see this girl. Her name is Anna Sanchez. Uh, she goes by the name of Lollipop. Uh, she was telling us about a production called uh, Dance, dance Machine. Uh, it was a production getting ready to go to Reno, uh, Nevada. And uh, she saw us dancing and everything. And she said, wow, uh, I think this guy might be interesting. Uh, she gave us the address and the phone number. So we got on the bus, went back home. Everybody went everywhere. <coughs> My mom called him. <coughs> and we talked to him. He said he wants to see what we got. So about three days later, we go, introduce ourselves. We got on all our clothes. We really look like lockers, to be honest with you, because we had knickerbockers on and this and that. Our little old custom costume that we thought was appealing. And uh, we went on to meet this man. And at that time, he was at the dance studio that was getting ready to uh, do the production to go to uh, Reno, Nevada. Uh, to dance at this club, this a casino called the Harris. Uh, so we meet him, and he said, let me see what y'all got. So when we get out, we do the Fresno. At that time, everybody in here that's part of this production, mouth drop, cause like, wow. So the guy, his name is Jeff Kutash. It's his production called Dancing Machine, so his mouth dropped. Ah, I got to have you guys. It'll be a group within a group. It was Dance Machine, then it was us, Electronic Boogaloo Locker. So then we was hired. So we go back home, tell our mom. She's very excited and everything. She, she meets him, he comes over, I'll 